Hello everyone, welcome now to game one in the series between Rex and Hui. This is taken from TESL Round Robin. This has been the first weekend. I believe this is day three of the tournament. And yes, it is going to be played every Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Four games a day, two sets of games every day. And this is the final set from that first weekend. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this and enjoying me bringing you guys the TESL coverage in English for all of you guys who do in fact enjoy the Taiwan Esports League. Coming in over here on the bottom left, it is Rex spawning as the blue Zerg. Meanwhile on the top right, it is Yo I Am Hui spawning as the red Protoss. Protoss versus Zerg and really taking a look at the strategy here it really feels as though there's been a paradigm shift in terms of expansion and expansion types. Before it always used to be that forge fast expansion. I don't know if it will be the case here. It looks like it is just going to be a close gateway once more and the forge fast expansion has gone the way of the dodo. It has been replaced with this mothership core expansion where players will try to get two workers per mineral patch, two workers on each Vespian geyser here and here, and then finally followed up with that mothership core. You can see the double assimilator already now placed down. Most likely will have two workers on each geyser. Cybernex core shouldn't be too far behind as we already have the Overlord making its way directly across the map. Now, I believe on this particular version of the map, it is forced cross spawns. And forced cross spawns would be the only real reason why Rex would be moving out with the Overlord directly at his opponent's base. Tournament edition maps often do have forced cross spawns, as you now see Rex making a move perhaps to try to park this overlord somewhere down over here and get some good scouting information as well. This initial overlord here to keep track of what's going on inside the main base and perhaps to scout out that natural expansion. Here you do see 15 workers on the main and then two on each here. I believe that last worker will, yes, make it an even 16 at each of these mineral patches before he goes and tries to place down a nexus at his natural expansion. He will get a little bit of diminishing returns as you can see the probe now making its way down here. Nexus will be coming in. There you go. And we should also be seeing that mothership core. Chrono boosting out that Mothership Core does mean that Mothership Core arrives in only 20 seconds. And that initial 10 second difference is very important. Anytime you can get a Spellcaster out slightly faster, that does mean that it will have a little bit more energy. How often have we seen casters just short on a little bit of energy to get off a Force Field, a Psy Storm, a Fungal Growth? That is the case going to be here as... You want to always make sure that this Mothership Core is ready to cast that Photon Overcharge if necessary or that initial Time Warp. Now, what is Hui going to be doing with this Mothership Core? That is going to be the all-important question as I believe there is a very, very narrow gap, very, very narrow gap right there. And what you're going to see this Mothership Core do once the Sentry is in position is finally do a bit of scouting. Now, that Mothership Core does move relatively slowly, only as fast as an upgraded, excuse me, only as fast as an upgraded Overlord or a standard Thor. But since it does fly across the map, it does still feel like it's moving quickly and it should be able to scout out his opponent's base. Now, here, Rex now has a number of questions he wants to ask himself. Does he want to try to establish up a third base here, which is the typical typical location, or does he want to try to do it a little bit more linearly here? Depending on what Hui does, um, it will make a very, very big difference. If Rex tries to expand into this location, which um, which is probably a little bit easier to defend or harder to defend if there's any en engagements by ground, at least he doesn't expose himself to a lot more surface area here. You can see that the Mothership Core has arrived. A little game of darts now coming in as the Queen now trying to throw all of those little darts back at that Mothership Core. It looks as though the Mothership Core will simply fly back home. 
and that Mothership Core down to six shields doesn't take any critical damage. Meanwhile, coming back around, you can see there are Zerglings in position. We are now going into a Stargate for perhaps Oracles or Phoenixes. That is always important to note as the Stargate is already in position. Let's see what that first unit will be. It will in fact be a Phoenix, but wasting a Chrono Boost, even though the Pylon is not ready, a little bit of a, or a very, very big waste there, as that Phoenix will be significantly delayed. Never good to be perhaps delayed ever so slightly. As you can see that the sentries are pushing back. A Zealot is now making a move out here as a Zealot is joining in on the fight. All those Zerglings gonna get completely held up and destroyed as Rex asleep at the wheel meanwhile you can see one hallucinated phoenix now doing a bit of scouting as more phoenixes um going to go ahead and try and shoot down this overlord here let's take a look at it it looks as though the phoenix will go ahead and pop that overlord in just a moment and this is where the counter attack will be we want to shoot down all of these overlords and once these overlords are all gone if he can actually um, take down enough of them, perhaps he can delay this attack which is coming in. It is primarily consist or cons composed of Zerglings at this point, as we now see the third base going to perhaps get cancelled. Zerglings getting a good surround here. Pylon now coming in. Zealots now making their way in as well. No upgrades at all though on those Zealots, as level 1 weapons upgrade has not yet been completed. Meanwhile, on the front door, oh, for some reason decided not to warp in right at the gap. The sentry would not have been able to warp in in time to get off a of force field, and I believe the Zerglings could have gotten in right there. Photon Cannon now coming in. Are the Zerglings going to be able to make anything happen here? Double Photon Cannons now coming in as the force fields trap one Zergling. Nope, doesn't even trap one Zergling, but the Zealots are able to slice and dice to take them down still. Mothership Core, what's happening here? Zerglings, are they going to be able to make their way in? No, they will not. A probe catching them off guard as you can see more force fields coming in that is a lot of force fields used just to handle zerglings early on and now will come the reinforcements rex now coming in over the top with roaches and this is going to be a large amount of roaches at that roaches now simply crawling across the space here you can see that the zerglings are now going to be making their way down over here as well as the zerglings want to get into position all right, double gateways, double photon cannons. The Nexus is well protected with those photon cannons here. Only the Zerglings can go after the probes now as the probes are taken down ever so slowly. More Zerglings not going to get taken down here as the photon overcharge brought online. Even though it is within range, you still need sight in order to shoot things. And there you have it, more damage being added here. What's going to be happening next? The Mothership Core does have a lot of energy. Are we going to see perhaps see some time warps? There some force fields as the Roach is going after some very, very easy sentries. All their sentries are now down. Beautiful focus fire by uh, Rex as now there is one Void Ray. This Void Ray, no prismatic alignment. There you go. Finally bringing it online as the Roaches are simply just going to try to walk inside here. Mothership Core cast another prismatic alignment here as more damage is being dealt will another void ray come out no it does not as this void ray is not engaging in the fight at all all right rex looks to deal a lot of damage you can see more zealots trying to warp in this is not looking good a new pylon needs to be added here one pylon and one pylon only that is a bit of a problem as you can see void ray after or what roach after roach falling to this void ray but a lot of damage has been dealt inside the main rex now down to what 96 supply the roach is going after this colossus will it fall no it looks like it will not the zergings are not going to be able to get there as you can now see a second void ray joining in on the fight here prismatic alignment not coming online at all for some reason not being microed and instead going after an overseer that overseer is going to hide perhaps off to the north this colossus does survive and that was a rather interesting push here by Rex, dealing a lot of damage. But was it enough? Let's take a look at the losses. Rex actually losing a bit more as he is now even with Hui in terms of bases. And Hui now coming over the top with 118 supply. Worker count, 62 to 65. Both players on three bases. And will Rex try and take a fourth? That is the important question to ask now as we now see Hui with four op op 
operational warp gates down here on the low ground. More pylons being added in as well. You can take a look. This massive Protoss death ball now making a move forward. Void Rays extremely efficient now in dealing damage. And the Mothership Core should be joining in on this fight here in just a second. Let's take a look. Creep Tumor is now doing a slow push out. Observer is now pushing out as well. Meanwhile, a Zergling will be able to sneak by inside. Nope, just gets a little bit of superficial damage onto those warp gates as more stalkers are being added. Hui looking to get the right composition of units before he engages. Meanwhile, taking a look at Rex, things actually look rather troublesome for him. He is down in supply. He does have a lot of static defense here, but there is no real place to really um, just line up all of his spine crawlers. These Void Rays, Stalkers, Zealots, and Mothership Corps can attack from one of three locations, and the spine crawlers will not be able to get there in time with their 12 second route. Also, the Phoenix is now just trying to make sure that Rex doesn't get any foreknowledge on all of these units here. If he does get foreknowledge on all of these units, then he will be able to position them rather well. You can see all the spine crawlers are spread across here. Spore crawlers being added, making sure that there are no observers. Oh, what is this? The observer does get shot down there as we now see Ultralis with the chitinous armor. That chitinous armor, very, 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 very potent as it will upgrade the armor from 3 to 5, maybe even up to 6 as we are at tier 3. Meanwhile, Dark Shrine coming in, Charge coming in, level 2 weapons upgrade coming in. Is it going to be enough? Queens now need to lay down more creep tumors. We also have Infestors in this group and the Infestors could land a couple of key fungal growths. The problem, no, absolutely no Corruptors to deal with the Void Rays and the Colossus. What is he thinking with no anti-air? The Colossi and the Void Rays will simply deal so much damage. Here you go. I believe Rex is going to test the meat grinder. That is the Protoss Death Ball. And there you go. There's the engagement. What's going on? The Infestors could try to get off some fungal growths. There it is. But it is not going to be enough. You can see that that four second delay, another fungal growth could come down. Infestor is getting taken down rather quickly. There's some transfusions, but without the right compositions of un a composition of units, Rex's army should just get taken out by this massive, very potent air army. The queens are here. Void Ray is trying to engage the transfusions, however, and the queens look like it might just be just enough as we may lay down a time warp to try to catch some of these units. All right, no, no time warp available. Um, what's going on here? The Mothership Corps should have thrown down a time warp to catch some of these units. Queens now caught out of position. Rex losing more units here. And what was that? I don't know. A little bit of sloppy play coming in from all sides as the Dark Templars now making their way out. All right, it is going to be four bases to three. But it is scouted out by Hui. Hui knows what exactly is going on here at the 6 o'clock position. Meanwhile, off to the north at the 12 o'clock position here, no expansion. Instead, Hui is opting to expand towards his opponent at the 3 o'clock location. Zerglings, Dark Templar is now doing a, a quick little bit of an engagement there as the Zerglings try and focus this down. This is not going to be good news for Rex whatsoever. Zealots now coming over to slice and dice Immortals. Void Rays trying to do that bit of an engagement and the Zealots are now backing off. Void Rays now look coming in and as well as we can see a quick, quick destruction on this base here. Not exactly sure what took it down. Um, I'm really not sure what took it down. Oh, the Dark Templars is what took it down. That's why you don't see any just broken, um, you know, Protoss stalker parts as well as the Rex now trying to reestablish once again this hatchery here at the six o'clock position. Things are still not looking good. Losses for Hui are even compared to his opponent, Rex, but it really feels like the momentum is in favor of Hui at this point. Nexus. Finally up and running. We are going to be getting in some photon cannons here with absolutely 
absolutely no anti-air. This is going to be a rather uphill battle. Those Void Rays came in with a lot of kills, or more importantly, a lot of damage. Even without any weapons upgrades, they've been able to really focus down on these Ultralists. One of the few units in the game that can actually deal a lot of damage to those Ultralists there. 16 damage with that Prismatic Alignment. Once you even account for the armor, it is still 11 damage, but that is still 22 damage a second especially on a Void Ray that can attack and move while not suffering any damage from those Ultralists at all. Meanwhile, Rex moving out with a couple of Queens. You can see Dark Templars now just buying time for Hui as the Dark Templars doing a little bit of slicing. Gonna hide off over here. Ultralists unable to find them. And there's a rather interesting line of creep just sitting off to the north. All right. Creep tumors all the way across the map. Still no observers. And now that Rex is finally getting a, a, a Spire up, even though it will not have weapons upgrade, it may still be enough. Zerglings have done a run by into the natural expansion. This potentially could be huge, as this Nexus could fall rather easily. Ultralist now coming back around. What's happening? All of the units are caught out of position. Hui being forced to run and caught in his own narrow choke point. Ultralist getting transfused. Buying himself a lot of time as the Hydralist now trying to be do a little bit of an engagement. Is the Colossus there? Yes, the Colossus is there. Prismatic alignment. Ultralists need to focus down the Colossus. And with this, Rex has found the right composition of units. Completely catching Hui off guard as a Nexus does fall and beautifully played by Rex. Rex taking down the natural expansion with a run by of Zerglings. And with a couple of uh, Hydralists able to focus down all of those Void Rays. Void Rays do very, very little damage to those Hydralists. And um, Hydralists only suffering, I believe, what? Uh, what is that? Three damage? Six damage a second because of the armor difference as well. You can take a look. The Hydralists now trying to once again re-engage. There you go as my... I Hold on one second. All right. My apologies. Let's go ahead and come back to this as the Void Ray is not coming back over here. Hydra is now going to shoot down all of these Void Rays. Void Rays do go down. There is a couple of Dark Templars in here, but they will get taken down relatively quickly. All the Dark Templars now taken out. One Immortal in a very beautiful location, but it does finally get taken down as well. Ultralist should have engaged. Wow, survives with 13, 14 hit points. A couple of transfusions will heal that baby right back up as we now see Dark Templars going after the hatchery here. All right, Zergling is going to go ahead and swarm in. That will get cleaned up rather nicely. Down, the, down it goes. And now Hui in the uphill battle. All it takes is one battle with the right units. And things are now looking very up and up for Rex. I don't know if Hui realized how many um, Colossi he needed in order to fend off against all of those Hydralis. His units were kind of supply blocked at 200 over 200. He was unable to get the necessary units out. And here we go. Storm or St Rex's or Storm's Rex now crashing in on the front door here. And this is not looking good at all for Hui. Hui trying to fight back. This is not looking good at all. Yo, I am just having a lot of problems. The Nexus has been rebuilt only to be destroyed once more. Once the units are now inside the production, that is just a sad, sad day as Hui perhaps thinking that his own expansions would be taken down, not his main base. And instead, Rex attacking where his opponent is perhaps weakest inside his main as opposed to go for, going for these economy lines that have a lot of photon cannons and a lot of tightly packed buildings. His also choice to attack these locations um, have spelled abs um, a s almost certain victory now as you can see that the spine crawlers here are defending once more. The units have not been able to get inside into the main base here. Extractor now down to only a handful of gas. Meanwhile, size storms do go down. Zergling is now trying to swarm in. Is it going to be enough? Hui dealing a lot of damage to a lot of low hit point units and doing a very good trade here. Ultralist, however, still bringing up the rear. And is it going to be enough? There are still a handful of corruptors in the air. No more void rays. No more colossi. They need to upgrade into broodlords. And that is what we're seeing now. Greater Spire, about 65 seconds away. The Corruptors, once they are now 
or once they go into that Broodlord formation, it is going to be simply too much damage. There is no way that I can see Rex um, losing this game unless he throws it. There is no Void Ray production coming in from Hui, and those Broodlords are simply just going to walk over or fly over this army here. If the Stalkers or the Archons try and engage, they're going to get choked up on Broodlings, and then the an Ultralis will be able to swarm in. The Ultralis are fully upgraded, which means that the Broodlings will also be fully upgraded as well. This Nexus is going to be falling here before it even gets operational. A whole bunch of Changelings now leading the way. And forcing Hui to focus them down as that does cause a little bit of problems. One changing still in the backfield. Um, very, very easy to spot there as we are now simply waiting on the Infestor Broodlord army. How have things have turned for Rex? Rex now getting up for five more Broodlords. Could go in for six. Maybe is he going to make it a prime number seven? I don't... Well, he could. He does have enough Corruptors for it. Infestors are now being brought over. And yes, level 3 attack upgrades coming online. Broodlords now making their way over. Infestors could quickly be making their way over as well. Spine Crawlers are being added. What's going to be happening here? Ultralis. Six Ultralis now ready to go. Broodlords are now going to drop off the children on the Nexus here. Meanwhile, Zerglings have done another run by into the main. It's going to be a split attack as the Ultralis now come in. Broodlords now dropping in units. High Templars trying to come in with that Psy Storm. So far, all the Broodlords are just sitting on that Psy Storm, hoping that a Queen will come over and transfuse them. It looks as though no transfusion is necessary as there is the GG. Hui losing the game here. After having a commanding lead for quite some time, Rex able to macro back up. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening.